Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical Lens. Welcome back to another Final Fantasy 15 news and information video. Today for you guys, we have some pretty big news to talk about as there is going to be some brand new stuff coming to Final Fantasy 15. But not only that, this is going to be included in Final Fantasy 15's Royal Edition. Now, we were talking about this a couple of days ago within a Sea Salt Snippets episode where the ESRB has recently rated a Final Fantasy 15 Royal Edition. Now, in that video, we were assuming that the Royal Edition would be some sort of a complete Final Fantasy 15 bundle where it includes the base game along with all of the DLC content, including Episode Ignis, Episode Prompto, Episode Gladio, the Final Fantasy XV Comrades multiplayer, and the different DLC weapon and equipment packs. And indeed, this is what the Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition is, but on top of that, it's also going to be including some brand new content as well. The Royal Edition will be launching on March 6th. It's going to be receiving its very own physical copy, and the base price of the game will come in at 50 US dollars. Now, it should be noted that because the Royal Edition is, of course, going to be including some brand new content, it doesn't actually mean that you have to go out and buy the game over again to just get the additional content. That would be slightly ridiculous, right? So you can actually pick up the Royal Edition content by itself as a standalone on the PlayStation Store on March 6 as well for the base price of 20 US dollars. Now personally I believe that that price is a tiny bit steep. When you look at it, it's costing $50 for the base game along with all the additional content, but it also includes the Royal Edition content as well. And for some reason $20 out of that $50 price tag is just the Royal Edition content. That kind of seems a little bit strange. I think it would be smart on Square Enix's behalf to actually lower the price of the standalone content to something like $15 or $10. But we are going to be using this video to go through all of the content so you guys make that decision for yourselves at the end of the video. The other thing is Final Fantasy 15 Windows Edition which is the PC version of Final Fantasy 15 will also be launching on March 6 as well along with the Royal Edition and it should be noted that the Windows Edition will be including all of the DLC content for Final Fantasy 15 even including the Royal Edition content. So yes when you pick up Final Fantasy 15 for your PC it will be the most current and up-to-date version including all of the additional content. Content. So let's sit down and take a look at all of the additional new content that the Royal Edition will be bringing to the table. First things first, and this is probably the biggest piece of new content that will be part of the Royal Edition, is an expanded Insomnia City Ruins. During the development period of Final Fantasy XV, it was explained that the City of Insomnia would be pretty much fully explorable, or at least a decent portion of it. Of course, we do get to explore Insomnia in Final Fantasy XV at the very end of the game, when of course the city is in ruins, but when it comes to the exploration side of Insomnia during that point in the game, it's actually very linear. There is a few different pathways and hidden routes that you can actually take throughout the city ruins to come across extra enemies for XP or of course extra treasures, but really for the most part you end up heading in the exact same direction anyway. So the exploration side of Insomnia really wasn't nailed too good. And I think this is one aspect of Final Fantasy XV that the fans were really, really disappointed about, especially when it was explained that at some point Insomnia will be explorable. So yes, finally, we're going to be getting that Insomnia expansion within the Royal Edition. Apparently, this expansion is going to bring forward new side quests within the city ruins. And on top of that, three brand new secret bosses. First things first, we have Cerberus, which we can find in the city ruins. We'll also have another boss known as Omega, which again can be found within the city ruins. And there is also one last other secret boss known as the Rulers of Yore. The boat in which we used to get from Cape Kaim to Altitia is going to be fully controllable. And I'm not too sure why Square Enix did this. I don't really know that people wanted this to happen, but yeah, we can now actually drive and fully control the boat between Cape Cam and Altitia. You're also gonna be able to fish off the boat and there's gonna be some new recipes added to the game as well, which I would say would coincide with the fishing that you can do on the boat itself. And also during the boat gameplay in the trailer, we see this scene right here of, of course, the group standing on the boat, but in the distance, we can also see what looks to be some sort of a large sea creature. So it makes me think there might be some 
some sort of a boss encounter, some sort of giant sea creature type boss that we might come across while we're traversing over the ocean. I'm really interested to know if Square Enix will be adding any extra new sort of areas that we can actually drive the boat to, like some secluded islands that might include some enemies or some treasures. Otherwise, I just can't really see the point in actually using the boat to go out and do some fishing. I can just do that in a pond. There's going to be a brand new accessory item added to the game, which will allow us to perform a new action known as Armega Unleashed. As you guys should know, Armega is the special royal weapon uh, ability thing we can use within Final Fantasy XV. We can summon forth all of the different royal weapons and go absolutely ballistic on enemies. From the seams of it, this Armega Unleashed is going to be taking that, but one step forward. So I assume that with the upcoming new secret bosses that will be added to the game through the Royal Edition, uh, we'll most likely need to use our Mega Unleashed against bosses like Cerberus or Omega. Although we don't get to see too much gameplay of the R Mega Unleashed within the trailer, I think it's safe to say that it will probably work the same way as the Ultimate R Mega Mode does when versing bosses like Leviathan or, of course, Arden. Apparently, once the players obtain all of the royal weapons within Final Fantasy XV, we are then able to explore an unidentified part of the world which we go to to then obtain this new accessory to use our Mega Unleashed. There's also going to be a first person mode, which was actually revealed during the reveal of the Windows Edition for Final Fantasy XV. It would seem to be that this first person mode will also be available on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One as well. And again, it's kind of similar to the whole uh, boat thing. I'm not really too sure if people wanted a first-person mode in Final Fantasy XV. There's going to be local myths and legends added to the world space of Final Fantasy XV, and apparently there's going to be new locations added throughout. These new myths and legends are going to be adding new story and lore content to the overall world space of Final Fantasy XV, which I think is pretty important, especially for a game like Final Fantasy XV, where it was kind of lacking in the lore department, this sort of content is always, always very exciting for the game. And that right there is all of the brand new content that will be coming to the Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition. Of course, like I said, it will be including all of the DLC episodes as well as the Comrades multiplayer. And on top of that, all of the weapon and equipment DLC packs as well. Now you guys should also know that in 2018, Square Enix planned to release more DLC episodes for Final Fantasy XV. These include episode R, and quite possibly something along the lines of an episode Luna. Now because the Royal Edition is going to be releasing on March 6th, I think it's safe to assume that the Royal Edition will not be including 2018's brand new DLC, rather that will be something entirely separate. It should also be noted that the physical version of Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition will be including some brand new artwork that does look very similar to the limited edition of the game. The one thing that is concerning me as of right now, like I was saying at the start of the video, is just the price of the additional content, being that it's just 20 for the standalone version of the Royal Edition just to get the new content, I feel is a little bit steep. So yeah, again, like 10 or $15 I think is a little bit more viable. But of course it comes down to how expanded Insomnia is. We also know we're getting new locations added throughout the world space and new story lore. So I don't know, maybe $20 isn't actually asking too much. In the comment section down below guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions towards all of this. I've been Cynical, hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day and until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Hit him on a page, you'll be coming through stunning. Go dead my mouth when you suckers be bluffing. Look, crank, gaming up your bitch, though. Catch me in the back, playing Super Nintendo.